Hello and welcome to the Kayla Ambrose Show. I'm your host and your travel guide to the other side, Kayla Ambrose. And on the podcast here, I like to talk about supernatural, metaphysical, paranormal, and other events of this nature. And as I like to say, I'm not new age, I'm old age. I'm an esoteric wisdom teacher. I teach the wisdom teachings from the ancient temples, those that were in ancient Greece and ancient Egypt and further back. First and foremost, that's what I love to do. And I like bringing them into the modern world, giving them uh, a little twist and showing how you can take these age-old wisdom teachings and use them in your daily life. So that's a lot of what I talk about on here. I also occasionally answer questions from listeners. You can go to my website, exploreyourspirit.com. Sign up for my free newsletter where you'll get lots of news about upcoming classes, special events, new podcasts, and other information, including books that I have. Um, But you can also go in there to the contact form and say, I have an Ask Kayla question. Put it in there and I pick some really good ones and occasionally answer them on my blog or here on the show. Today, the topic I want to talk about is candle magic, what the colors of the candles mean, and if you do like candles and working with them, how this magic works. So let's get started. Let's delve into this. Candles have been used in magical rituals for, uh, it's hard to really count how many hundreds of years were going back and even older before candles were made in the way they are now. Um, as soon as there was fire and a way to burn it, there was some kind of connection there with magic and ritual and burning things in the fire. And then that honed down to a smaller light as we learned how to capture fire and put it from a big bonfire into a torch that we could use the light in caves and passageways and then smaller into receptacles that we could carry and found ways to create tallow or wax or things to uh, put a smaller wick in and and to make a small candlelight. So it's coming from a bigger uh, ritual with fire and pinpointing it into a specific thing when we use a candle. So we still know of rituals that have bonfires Many of those are even celebrated as the solstices, equinoxes, and other type of rituals. And those can be very life-affirming when you see the big fires and, and they're engaging. We all still love fireplaces in our home and to, to watch a fire. It's easy to get lost in the flame. And they're more communal. They're more for groups or being with a special someone and being in that moment in the firelight. A candle many times, of course, can symbolize romance and lighting the way. Um, We light candles, though, in rituals that are usually very mindful and a direct purpose. There are many churches you can go to where you can light candles in memory of someone. There's a candle that's lit many times like a unity candle in a wedding ceremony. They're usually designed with a purpose. And so candles now, I think, are probably more popular than ever for ritual and purpose in this way. People use them for aromatherapy, um, just to feel relaxed. They sometimes will use it for meditation. And it's, it's such a simple tool that is affordable and everyone can use it, but yet is very powerful. You can be in a very uh, dark room and it's amazing with just that little pinpoint of light of lighting one small candle, how it illuminates the room and changes the energy. And there's a very old teaching about that, that it only takes one small pinpoint of light from a candle to light up the room and to chase the darkness away. And that's an esoteric wisdom teaching, talking not just about physically what that does, but within us, when we take the time to work on ourselves and to step out of our our lower selves and go towards our inner light into our higher self and awaken that light, 
we dispel the darkness within ourselves as well. We help chase away our shadow self and enlighten ourselves up to awaken and to be more and in higher connection with our higher self and our soul. So a candle, first of all, reminds us of that, how it only takes one tiny little focus, a tiny little bit of light to change the whole energy in a room. When we think about this and we see how easy a candle can transform, then we understand that everything is able to change and to be transformed just by allowing in a little bit of light. And that's such a good reminder to take with us every day to remember that it doesn't take much. Just taking a moment to remember and to engage in the light and to have an enlightened moment. And for many of us, lighting a candle put us in that mood, step us into that frame of mind and, and uh, prepare us, changes our energy and gets us ready to be in that mode. Now, when I work with candles, I like to first think about what I'm going to light the candle for. And I often take a little piece of paper and I'll put that under the candle holder. I'll write down that piece of paper, what it's for, whether it's something like prosperity or love or something bigger that I'm working on, but I keep it to a sentence at most. And I'll write that on a piece of paper and I tape it underneath. Sometimes if there's a symbol that I feel like would help me focus, and remember it, I'll carve the symbol onto the side of the candle using a, a smaller candle to do that and just a little symbol. The next step usually is I'll think about the color I want to use. You know color is very important to me. I talk about color a lot in my book, The Awakened Aura, as I see colors around people. So I know how much color affects each of us, the colors we wear, uh, the colors we put in our home, how we decorate with them and how much color affects us, our energy fields every day. So you can read more about colors and infusion of color and how to infuse that into your aura uh, in my book, The Awakened Aura. And you can also use some of that infusion with the candles you light. I'm going to give just kind of a brief overview of some of the colors right now, uh, but there's so many other hues of colors as well. I can't go into all of them today, but I'll give you some overviews. Some of them are kind of easy to recognize, and you're going to realize it right away. So let's start with pink. And pink is love, just like a rose quartz, the color pink. It's things that are good. It's loving. It's kind. It's affectionate. It's warm. It's inviting. It's not passion like red. It's more of a softer, loving feeling. Let's talk about blue. And blue I usually break up into uh, three different hues because there's so many uh, with blue, so many shades. There are with all, but blue is a really popular color. Having said that, though, going back to pink for a minute, there's a difference in light pink and a soft pink, which is very loving and soft, versus a fuchsia pink, which is moving more into that red with that passion, but a little bolder and stronger and sexier in a different way. Fuchsia is very different than red. Red is power and fuchsia is more sexy, but I have a playful soft side as well and a little more mysterious, I think. Whereas we go into blue, starting with say a light blue, that is very uh, a good color to meditate with. It's a compassionate color. It helps calm us, it helps us relieve anxiety, and it helps lift the spirits. That's very different from uh, a deeper blue, which usually has to do with emotions, and it can be when we're looking to transcend. Where the light blue is calmer, the deeper blue is say, saying, I'm looking at this now, not just from an emotional standpoint, but from a logical standpoint, and I'm seeing what actually is occurring here, and I'm ready to make a change and to transform. So what was in our subconscious or unconscious is now becoming clear. So we are growing in that way. Then when I see more of a turquoise blue, that's more of a healing color. The great healing is going on, 
and also a lot of psychic uh, power and energy as well. Red, like I was saying, is power, and it's a lot of sexuality and passion. It's also vitality and um, energy to protect as well. You notice a lot of careers that are in the healing industry uh, that require a lot of action and strength and protection are uh, kind of defined by red. Firemen in red, um, emergency technicians and the sirens are red and uh, their auras often are red to me. People that have to move very quickly in order to protect. When I see the auras of a lot of people in the military, police officers, those like that, a lot of red in the aura having to do with that spirit of wanting to help and to protect and to move quickly. So there's a lot of power in it and a lot of energy coming from the heart, very courageous, very vital and important. When I see purple, that's a very spiritual color. It's a symbol of psychic ability. It's moving into the higher realms, into the spirit realms. And it can be a very successful color as well. If you see purple with gold, those are the colors of kings and queens and moving into high success. Versus if it's a lighter color like lavender, that's more about uh, relieving anxiety, relieving stress, um, about letting go of the past or being wounded in the past and now being able to heal from it. It's a symbol of kind of the divine feminine energy as well. What you don't want to see with lavender or purple is gray mixed in and gray as well. Gray is depression sometimes gray is it should be a neutral color but gray tends to take on the and absorb the other colors around it and then either lift the mood or drop the mood hard so it's a color I really don't like and when I see it in home decor which I talk about if you've heard my podcast talking about um, my intuitive interior decor when I see gray coming back into style it shows me that we're about to enter hard times and there's going to be a lot of depression and a lot of people going through some hard times and gray kind of foretells that. So when you're using gray in a candle, you're really trying to move through something and to either lift something or kind of destroy something. Yellow uh, is always in the aura. It has to do with mental ability. It's your intellect and your mental powers and same in a candle with the yellow it's, it's about wisdom and intelligence. It's about thinking very clearly. And depending on the brightness of the yellow, it can be um, optimism as well, a sunny disposition, bringing some hope into a situation like that. White candles are really to purify. Uh, they provide protection and they bring truth. They can also be used in binding things together. And it's a lot about uh, just true connection with spirit. I think of a white candle almost like as a clear white quartz, that it's whatever energy you put into it is what it's going to magnify. Green as a candle usually is about money and prosperity. And it's used for career, for bringing in money, uh, and, and those type of things especially. Brown is usually to ground. So brown and ground, and uh, it can sometimes connect with the animal kingdom, with the earth, with physical healing at times, but really when you need to be grounded. And black is kind of, uh, you know, I talked about white and what it, you know, will do in that aspect. Black will banish things where you need to get rid of them. It will absorb as well, but in order to then transmute and release. So it brings the ending of something. White can kind of bring a creation of something new where the black is going to absorb and bring a transition and an ending. It removes the negative um, and can help heal from types of illnesses as well. Uh, gold is kind of the highest intensity magnification of the sun. It has to do with solar energy. And people use it for money, they use it for love, spiritual growth, connecting with the uh, other planes of energy. And it's really powerful, especially used with other colors. 
Silver is more of the receptive energy, the moon energy. That's really working with moon magic and bringing things that have to do with intuition and uh, transition in that way and being more receptive to opening up to psychic abilities. Orange is another really common color. That's a great color for tapping into your inner child, into raising your creative energy, getting back your joyful spirit, and um, bringing success with many things. So orange is a really powerful color. If you combine it, say, with the blue, um, it'll help bring change in order to step into a new level of creativity. So there's times when you want to use them together in that way to really magnify. Okay, so that's kind of just a quick overview of the colors. And, you know, with candles, there are colors that are assigned for each day of the week. And some people like to do the rituals on the days that are assigned to certain colors as well. I'll give you some of the most popular um, days that people connect with colors. For Monday, it's white, gray, and silver. Tuesday is red, brown, and other colors of that nature. Think of like fall colors. Wednesday is yellow and gray. Thursday is purple and usually uh, a, a blue color, like in, in more of that true blue, as I call it, or a navy blue. Friday is a green, a pink, uh, a lighter blue. Saturday tends to be black, uh, the deeper shades of colors, and a maroon as well. And Sunday is usually gold or orange. So like I was saying, you can choose just one candle to burn in its pure color, or you can mix and match the candles together and burning them all at the same time to create a more sophisticated intention or visualization that you're working on. So let's say you wanted to bring something that was going to fulfill you spiritually, and you wanted to do this in a certain way, maybe in your career. You were like, I really want to tap into my higher purpose with my spiritual calling, but also find a way to bring it into my career so that I also can do this well and also be financially successful at it as well to take care of myself. So you might have a purple candle for tapping into career. You might add a deep blue candle with it to give you lots of logic to come across to the right ideas. Or you might add orange to really get creative ideas with your spiritual calling. And then you might add green or gold, whichever one called to you. And this really is intuitive work. This is part of the arts, as I say in my school, the Academy of Mystical Arts and Spiritual Sciences. Some things are a science and some are an art. And that's where intuition comes in, where you really intuit which ones feel the best for you. So you might add a green or a gold to tie in that you're financially successful with these endeavors as well. And so the first thing to think about it is what is your intention? What is it you're wanting to manifest or create? And the more aligned you are with this and focused on your goal and you're specific about it, the better it's going to go. So it's good, like I said, when you're writing underneath uh, the candles like I do under the holder, a, a one sentence or less of what, what you're wanting to do. For example, like the one I described, you might say, I wish to tap into my spiritual purpose for being here in this lifetime and to be able to harness this energy through my career that helps others in the highest and best way and that also will take care of me financially so that I can afford to do what I'm here to do. And so you want to keep it in one sentence like that so it's pretty clear. At this point, when you're ready to work on your candle and you've picked the color, maybe you've carved a symbol into it and you've written what you want underneath the candle, some people like to look at the timing. So, for example, during a retrograde, like a Mercury retrograde, not the best time to try to affirm something new. Uh, that would be more where you might use a candle to let go of something, something that you want to heal, something that you want to remove. So you might use a black candle uh, during that time to remove something from your past that you're ready to let go of that was causing you pain or 
or negative feelings. So you want to be aware of divine timing. So retrogrades are a good time to let go. Same with the moon. You want to look at the phase of the moon. A new moon is a good time to bring in new energy and new projects and new ideas. So what you would do at a new moon would be very different than a full moon. I probably will do a podcast on the moon phases in the future and, and what they mean. But for right now, look those up. You can find them really basic examples of the moon phases and see which phase would be best for what you're looking to manifest. Okay, now that you've got these things ready, it's the right timing, uh, right time for you and all of that. You want to find a quiet place to sit with your candle to light. You may have cr created an altar for yourself or a sacred space to sit. And you want to be somewhere where you can be alone, undisturbed, and where the candle can be safely lit. So don't be under uh, a draft from, you know, the AC or by too close to a window where air is blowing through. Somewhere where you and the candle can be in the stillness. And you want to sit comfortably in front of the candle and take a minute to take a deep breath in, to hold it, to let it out, and to really think about what your intention is, what your desire is, visualize what you're trying to create. And then when you have that in mind fully in your mind, then light the candle. As the candle is lit and you're gazing onto it, you might want to gaze at the flame for a minute and just tap into that light and see that light is a symbol of the inner light that's being lit within you. See that light grow and imagine it getting bigger and bigger. Imagine the flame from that candle, the light of its energy and the particles from it going into your aura and lighting up your energy field and filling your aura and your energy with the light of this visualization that you're trying to create. You may also want to watch the candle flame. Many times as you're doing this work, your energy will begin to affect the flame. And the more energy you're putting into it, the more the flame may begin to move or dance around. If you see the flame get taller, um, that usually means that your energy is working. And the candle is very receptive in hearing it. If you see the candle flickering a lot and really moving around, the flame is, is moving. It means that there's a lot of emotions involved with this. And you may want to take the moment to take a deep breath in and out and relax and see if the flame relaxes with you because it's sensing your emotional field. If there's what I don't call a true flame, a happy burning flame. Instead, if the candle is, is um, popping or um, some people call it sputtering, where it's like, is it going to stay lit? Is it, you know, is the, is the candle flame not as calm as it could be? It's moving, not flickering. It's it's more aggressive than flickering. It's, it's sputtering like it's going to go out. This means there's, a conflict within you, within what you think you want and what you may feel that you want or feel that you deserve or negative energy that you've got that's kind of at war within yourself that's fighting against the energy of what you're trying to visualize. If the flame begins to move, but kind of in a, kind of in sometimes a clockwise little bit moving, the flame seems to be, uh, growing a little brighter. Sometimes it'll turn blue. Sometimes it seems to dance a little bit. That can mean that spirit is with you and is holding the energy as well. Some of you know I teach a course called Wise Woman Wisdom. And right now I'm talking about tea leaves and how they work and the alchemical connection and how tea leaves work. And candle magic works the same type of way. It has all the elements of magic in it. It's got fire, Obviously, with the flame, we've got the, the flame representing fire. The earth is kind of the body of the candle, the wax. And, of course, you need air. Fire needs air. has to have oxygen to, to make the candle flame burn. So you have the element of air. And then as the wax melts, 
uh, into that liquid state, we often call that a symbol of water. So you're bringing these elements together along with the connection with spirit and you with your energy, and that's kind of making an alchemical reaction. And so this is what, whether we're working with tea leaves, whether we're working with oils or crystals or herbs or all these things, this type of magic, that's what we're connecting, is bringing all these different elements together with intention. It's different with each person. Uh, the colors you pick, the way you do this ritual, there is no right or wrong way. It's whatever kind of calls to you. Just be safe. Always be there with your candle. Don't leave it there unattended. Um, you know, always uh, be there in the moment with it. So at this point, you're kind of incorporating different elements as well into the candle magic. One is just lighting the candle, connecting with that, the elemental energy, like I described, which is a magic of its own. But second, when you pick a certain color, you're using color magic as well and adding that into the mix. And if you are to draw a symbol into the candle, you're adding that as well, that sacred symbol and putting sacred geometry into work as well. You could do one of these or all three or even add more. There's, again, so many different ways that people use. Now, one of the things you'll find about candle magic is as many times as you go to study it, there'll be people with different ways. And one of the things some people argue about is, is it bad to blow out the candle when you're done? So going back to your ritual for a minute, you've visualized, you've lit the candle, you've taken the light within you, you're focused on that intention, you're watching the flame to see if it's clear of energy uh, and to see how well it's doing. And this may be a candle you've decided to light for so many days or nights to work on it. Maybe it's three nights you're going to light it or seven days uh, for depending on how big the thing is that you're wanting to, to visualize and send energy to. So once you've let it and you visualize and you take that in for me, and I'm telling you, this is just me and what I found works for me. So there will be other people that will say differently. I'm not disagreeing with them or their ways. Everyone has to find what the way is that's right for them. But for me, I usually don't spend longer than about 10 minutes. And sometimes it's even five to seven minutes. And the reason why is because I believe when we're trying to focus our mind on visualizing and being in that state, that that's a pretty good amount of time to hold that visualization. If, if you try to, even in meditation for most people, if you try to meditate for longer than 10 or 15 minutes, your mind's going to wander pretty quickly and it's going to move on to other things or thoughts. And you even catch yourself and say, where did I just go? And why was I thinking about that? I need to get back and focus, focus. And to me, once you've lost the focus, you're kind of out of, let's call it the spell. You're out of that moment, that magic moment where you were focused with the candle. So I say, keep it simple, keep it short for as long as you can focus on that energy. That's what's going to work the best. So once you're done with your visualization, it's time to end this focus. And that's when you blow out the candle. And some people will say, absolutely not. Do not blow out the candle. They say you should snuff the candle. And I used to have candle snuffers and do that all the time. It looks like uh, like a little bell at the end of a stick. And you hold it over the candle and it snuffs it out. Some people actually pinch it out with their fingers. That was never anything that I wanted to do. But I used to snuff candles all the time because everyone told me, you have to do this or you're blowing it away. But I have found over the years and decades in my work that that's just not the case for me. Instead, when I blow it out, I very consciously put the energy and direct it into my mouth, almost like I'm speaking the words again. But instead, I use my breath and I picture my breath and a little bit of saliva that's mixed in there. I attune it with what I'm trying to visualize. And as I blow out the candle and see the flame then extinguish and turn into smoke, I visualize the smoke from that flame going up into the higher planes, carrying the message that I just sent from my breath, bringing it up into the higher planes, 
and delivering that message up into the highest spiritual planes of what I'm intending to create or to manifest. And I found that's very successful for me and works really well. I don't find that it dissipates the energy at all or dissipates the magic for me. Again, you try whichever one works for you um, and see. But I have found that very similar to when doing other rituals with fire and we let things go in the smoke. When we're doing a big fire and we're burning something to release it, like many people will do, they'll build a fire and throw in uh, something they've written and they want it to be burned away into the ash. I think that does dissipate it and that's the intention. But I very consciously blow and send the energy through my breath to send this message and to bring it up into the higher realms. Once I've blown out the candle, I then bring my hands together and I take a moment to be in gratitude. I thank spirit for listening. I thank the candle and the elements for their work. I thank those who were with me that were helping. And I just spend a moment in gratitude and appreciation for all these things. Now, if it's a candle that I'm going to use for three days or seven days, I leave it where it is on the altar and I let it cool. And I light the same candle for however many days I've set aside for what I'm manifesting. I tend to pick the size of the candle to be kind of what I think I will be using it for. Meaning, so if it's going to be lit only, say, for a very short time for a day, I'll use the smallest tea light. If it's a, a candle that I'm using for three days, it's those little votives, I think they're called, you know, the little short candles. If it's seven days, I might use a tapered candle. But I really want, by the time I'm done, that most of that candle is burnt and there's not much left. I really don't want much left of any of it. Um, when I'm done, sometimes I'll hold on to the wax for a while. And I might use it in something else. I might use it to uh, wrap up with a piece of paper uh, around it that was on the bottom of the candle holder to wrap that around it and to keep it until that manifestation comes into reality. I might save part of the wax and with that paper in a drawer or something um, until it manifests. And then later I can let it go. And when I let it go, I kind of crumble up the wax while again doing a prayer of gratitude and thankfulness for what has come into my life and then to let it go. Things I don't do is I don't talk about it with anyone else. I don't share. I do write down in my book the day that I started and how many days I did. I made any notes of things I saw or felt, any important dreams I had, and how the work continued for however many days um, that I did it. And then I don't speak of it again. I let that manifestation and visualization go out into the universe. I ask for highest and best good for the situation. Instead of trying to control it myself, I ask for the universe to bring divine order and divine wisdom and highest and best good to it. Instead of making it about my will, I ask for divine will and divine order. And that's because I really don't want any karma attached to it. I don't use it usually trying to make um, very personal wishes or desires that might be karma inducing without me even knowing. So instead I put out a clear idea of what I think and I ask for divine order, divine wisdom, divine guidance, highest and best. So I know then how it unfolds is how it's meant to do for the greater good for all. And I'm a big believer in that with not bringing in more karma or creating it in that way, but instead asking uh, for the greater good and that it tends to work out for the best in that way. Okay, so this was a quick little guide on candle magic, how to get started. You can use it on your altar. You can use it in rituals, different holidays. I hope you think about it differently now for every time you do light a candle and the colors and what it means and that you've enjoyed this little uh, quick tip and guide on how to use candles in your work. Wishing you all a very color-filled, joyful, magical day. <laughs>